I have built a randomizer with the names of 200 plus Pokemon characters up. And using this, we're going to pluck two names out of there, and thus, those characters will fight each other using their best possible teams. As always, the rules are in the description. Welcome back to Pokemon Master Showdown, and last time we had Elite Four Aaron of Sinnoh versus Carmine of the Blueberry Academy. Today though, we have Univan representation as the gym leader of Aspersia City, Cheron, faces off with Cantonian trainer, Green. Cheron has been shown to have different teams in different games, like Blue from several generations earlier. He has been both a rival and a gym leader, but unlike Blue, he's used two different teams for each one, using a team of a Univan starter, an elemental monkey, Haxorus, Gigalith, Unpheasant and Lipard in base black and white, and an assortment of normal types in various battles in black and white too. I'm just going to go for a mix. Green, just to clarify, I do mean the female trainer, just to avoid confusion. It's a weird thing. Originally, she was called Blue in Japan because it was red and green the first two games, and the rival was called Green. The third character, the female character, was called Blue. But in the West, they became red and blue. The rival became blue. The third trainer became green. And it became a bit of a mess, especially when Fire Red and Leaf Green came along and the character that was blue later became known as Leaf. So wearing the same clothes, so it's a mess. But anyway, I read the Western version of the manga when younger, so I associate her with Green. Anyway, she was called Green in Let's Go, so if you want to use that argument or not. I have a strong feeling it might be her Let's Go team here that is used with Blastoise, Kangaskhan, Victory Bell, Clefable, Gengar and Ninetales because that is not a bad team. For Cheron, I'm going to go for Embor, Gigalith and Haxorus from his Black and White 1 team and for Stoutland, Porygon Z and Chinchino from his Black and White 2 teams. It gives me a balance needed to counter her varied team, I hope anyway. It's almost time to head to Unova, and we are almost about to get underway. It is Trainer School versus Con Artist. It's Nuvema Town versus Pallet Town. It's Cheron versus Green today on Pokemon Master Showdown. And here we go. Four Green, Clefable, Gengar, Victory Bell, Ninetales, Kangaskhan, and Blastoise for Cheron, Haxorus, Gigalith, Stoutland, Embor. Porygon Z and Chinchino. Cheren starts with Gigalith, Green with Clefable. And what are the opening exchanges going to be? Clefable goes for a Stealth Rock, Gigalith does the same thing. We have the mirror move right at the start. I wonder who's going to blink first, who's going to go for a damaging move. Clefable goes to the Moon Blast, it does slightly under a third on Gigalith. It goes to the Body Press, Clefable shrugs it off, barely gets hurt, eats the leftovers. Another Moon Blast. Gigalith drops below half as Gigalith goes to the Earthquake. Clefable eats its uh, leftovers. It goes back up to about two-thirds of its health. So, what's Cheren going to do? He switches out and in comes the Embor. It lands on the Stealth Rocks. Moon Blast hits. Drop the Embor below two-thirds. Clefable continues to eat the leftovers. Cheren stares at it. Goes to the Power-Up Punch. Now, that's good because it means Embor is going to hit harder. Clefable uses Thunder Wave and that paralyzes Embor. It's already quite slow. It's not going to like that very much. It's going to be barely able to move. Yeah, Clefable goes out. In comes Gengar. Lands on the Stealth Rocks. Embor hits the Flare Blitz. That takes Gengar straight out before it even had a chance. Cursed Body activates. Embor will not be able to do that again. The Clefable is back in. A Moon Blast. It drops Embor onto a fifth. Embor goes ahead. Smash. Clefable is down. Quick double knockout for Cheren, but Embor goes down at the same time. That is a fantastic opening. We've seen one loss for Cheren, one for Green. In comes Haxorus onto the stone, uh, uh, Stealth Rocks. Ninetales goes to the Drought. Haxorus, what are we going to see? I think it'll be a Dragon Dance. Blastoise comes in, lands on the Stealth Rocks. Haxorus goes for the D-Dance. The sun light is up, so a water move is not going to hurt Haxorus a whole lot, but I wonder if we're going to see an ice move. Blastoise goes for the fake out, and that makes Haxorus flinch. It's eating at the leftovers. I wonder. Haxorus goes for the poison jab. Blastoise is poisoned. It goes for toxic. It misses. Sharon will be happy with that. Blastoise drops below half. It eats the citrus berry. It's up to two-thirds of its health. Haxorus goes for another D-dance. 
Blastoise goes to Toxic and it lands it this time. Haxorus healing up. Healing up, but it won't last forever. Haxorus goes for another poison jab. Drops Blastoise on a 10. Blastoise goes to Raw. Gigalith is out, but the poison takes Blastoise out. Gigalith has about a quarter left. Victory Bell comes in. And I think Gigalith is going to come off worse in this exchange as Victory Bell goes to Giga Drain. Gigalith goes down. Green has three gone down. Sharon has two. So, who's going to be the one to come out and face Victory Bell? It is Porygon Z. It goes for the download. I wonder what we're going to see here. Victory Bell goes for the weather ball. Porygon Z straight down. It's tied up. Tied up entirely. Three losses for each combatant. Stoutland comes in to face Victory Bell. Goes for the Intimidate. But considering it's shown to be a special attacker so far, I don't think that's going to phase Green too much. A Giga Drain does slightly over a third on Stoutland. Stoutland goes to the Psychic Fangs. That hurts massively. Victory Bell. Less than a fifth of its health left as the two opponents face each other down. Victory Bell goes out. In comes Kangaskhan. Psychic Fangs drops Kangaskhan down below two thirds. The two opponents. That's a Drain Punch on Stoutland and that hurts. Kangaskhan hits very hard. That's a facade that drops Kangaskhan down to half. I think Kangaskhan is going to come off better here and it takes Stoutland down for the count. That is Stoutland down. Sharon has Haxorus left. A toxic Haxorus. He has Chinchino. Haxorus faces Kangaskhan. That's a drain punch and Haxorus shrugs it off but Kangaskhan is getting stronger. Haxorus goes to the Dragon Dance. It restores some leftovers health but the toxic is sapping away. What can Sharon do to try and get back into this? I think we need to see a massive possible move here. Nine Tails comes in, lands on the Stealth Rocks, but the Drought is back up. Haxorus goes to close combat. Nine Tails is down. We're tied up again. What can Green do to come back? Because Haxorus is on a timer, but she needs to do something. Victory Bell's out, straight onto the stones. It has 5% of its health left. Haxorus takes it out with Poison Jab. Oh, this has swung back in Cheren's favour. Kangaskhan is here, and can it make one final offensive? No, it cannot. Haxorus hits the close combat. Kangaskhan goes down. Green takes the loss. Cheren takes the victory. That is Unova 1, Kanto nil. What a fight. This went both ways. It swung back and forth like a pendulum. But in the end, it was the trainer from Unova who came out victorious over the trainer from Kanto. What a battle. What a match. As always, folks, I have been Once and Future Gamer. I have been your commentator. Thank you so very much for joining me here at this battle. And I will see you next time with another exciting installment of Pokemon Master Showdown.